Hello, this is Talamir, and welcome to another repair video. In this video, we are looking at an older PC. We're looking at, I think it's a Pavilion, uh, HP Pavilion. What is this thing? HP Pavilion 500 PC series. There's product number and everything. So, hopefully, this is useful to somebody. But, basically, it wasn't turning on. Now, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about here. I'll just put the power back in. Turn it on. A very normal older computer sound. Nothing coming on display. Yeah, if you look at the keyboard, no reaction. And I know it does at least boot for BIOS sake, you know? It, it does, generally speaking, work. It, it was super dusty when I first got it. And the moment that a computer doesn't turn on like that, it doesn't fully post. The first thing I do is I look at the motherboard and I look to see if there is any problems with it. Because quite commonly, uh, an issue that I've, I've found is that capacitors on them leak. And what do we see over here? Some leaky capacitors. So, what that tells me is that I gotta get this motherboard out, I gotta replace those capacitors. If I can, this will be a pretty cheap, computer to put together and put up for sale, I might be able to make 50 to $80 off of it, you know? I almost got it for free. Really all I gotta do is get those screws out, all those corners there, get all the cables unplugged, and I should be good to go. I'm not gonna show that because it's pretty straightforward. I will have to disconnect this as well, maybe. Maybe I might just leave it in place to make it a little easier to work on. Well, the capacitors have finally arrived. I was trying to find a computer that I could just harvest them from. An old, old computer. It just never happened, unfortunately. We need four of them. Always nice to have extra capacitors on hand, so I'll be putting those into storage. Pick the extra ones. Never know when you need them. So these are pretty darn easy to remove. I think it's these across here. Yes, it is exactly those four across. And I'm going to turn on my vent because this is going to get probably a little bit stinky. Lots of flux. Soldering iron is set to 470 degrees Celsius. Maybe I'm going to switch it up a little bit more because that board is a bit thick. And they have a tendency to use unleaded solder, which can be really annoying. So I got it now set to 485. Let's put a little bit of just straight up leaded solder. Actually, let's use this stuff. It's a little bit thinner. There we go. I just forgot that maybe I might want to check the polarity of these. Yeah, they've got a polarity checker in there anyways, as you can see. But yeah, the negative goes on the right side. There we are. Now we got it out. We do need to go and uh, get rid of the old solder. To do that, the easiest way to deal with this is to heat the board up first. And then we're going to use our wick. Using a 3 millimeter wick right here. I've got the uh, heat gun set to about 450. I want to heat it up a little bit. I'll apply a little bit of new flux in a bit. There we go. I think I got it all cleaned out. Okay, let's get those caps in. Now there is a few other tricks that you can remember for when uh, you're putting in new caps. If you can't remember which direction they are and this information here isn't helping, it should because there's a plus beside each one. You can see the pluses. Just remember that also a lot of the other caps are always facing the same direction. All those are all facing the same direction. As you can see. As you can see. A lot of them. The majority, if not, yeah, no, literally all of them are facing the same direction. So if you can't remember, put it in the same direction as the others, you should be safe, generally speaking. It's not always true, but at least on motherboards, generally speaking, it's true. Okay, I got the first one in. Let's just add a little dab of solder, just to get us started. Just hold it in place. Then we can go in with the other side. Need some flux. My real issue here that I'm dealing with is my room is extremely cold because my vent is on and the outside is 
freezing. It's like minus 10 out there. And then here is really cold. So my soldering iron is fighting against the temperature outside and the air currents in the room at exactly the same time. If you're noticing here, I am using two different types of solders. Um, I don't understand why, but this is a type of solder that I've had for a very, very long time. It's right here. And uh, it works great. It works absolutely amazing. It's 60-40. And uh, it melts wonderfully. But this stuff, it tends to clump. I don't understand why it clumps, but it's supposed to be theoretically also 60-40. Let's get this cleaned up. Have to apply a little bit of heat and then we can clean it up with some, some Q-tips. That ain't working well with those ram those ram sticks right there. We got ourselves a cleaner Q-tip. Let's see if we can just do it with some alcohol. It's always easier to clean it up, generally speaking, easier to clean it up with uh, with a dry Q-tip and some uh, lots and lots of heat. That's uh, not working out as well this time around. Okay, that's about as good as I can do. Now all I got to do now is put it back into the desktop chassis and give it a test. Now I'm not going to go and put in every single screw. I'm just going to put in, I'm just going to put in a couple. Just to hold it in place so that I can, I can work without worrying about it popping back out. So something around here, nice and central. Then one more to square it off. Probably don't need the second one at this point, but this, just in case, we'll put one over here, way in the corner. Okay, all we gotta do now is put the RAM in. And this is definitely an older computer. I'm pretty sure this is DDR3 RAM. Yes, it is. Why am I fixing up an older computer? Well, this probably is from 2012, but it can still work. It'll still, it'll still run Windows. You could even use a version of Windows 11 that probably would work on this. Let's say Windows 11 because this year Windows 10 is going to be no longer supported. And if that's the case, I better put something on here that will be useful. I'm pretty sure two of these sticks of RAM are the same. I'm going to have to pull them back out. No, just the one. Okay, these two are the same. This one and this one are the same. Now, that means that they're dual channel and they want to work together. So, I've got one more here that will bump this up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. And that has to be in a separate channel. There we are. Not bad. Let's get this... Oh. Oh, missed a cable. There we go. Now we can switch over to the monitor and get this thing turned on. You're wondering why the, cam the camera... You're wondering why the camera sometimes jitters around. It's because this is what I'm using for my mount. And it's... <laughs> yeah, so when you hit it, it just keeps bouncing. So here's the screen on. I'm going to change the input setting. Change it over to... RGB PC, that's the your VGA. Power on. What happens in here? Press the power button. Did I forget to switch something? No. Oh, I forgot some cables. Where are you? Oh, you're up here. There. I'll tuck it down there for now. What am I doing wrong? It's refusing to turn on at all. What is happening? Okay, I think I may have figured it out. I had, I think it was the front I.O. right here. It's, it's pin out, it was just so similar. I think I ended up putting it on one of the USB <laughs> things. Just really stupid of me. Uh, that was very stupid of me. Let's try that again. Pressing the power button. Yes. There we go. 
we have some action. Turn on the screen again because it timed out. Oh, that's what we're looking for. Oh, yeah. So that's all it needed was those capacitors to be replaced. It's done and dusted, and it's working. System, what do we got here? 3,500 megahertz, 12 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. Not bad. I am going to throw in a solid state drive. <laughs> maybe I'll leave the one terabyte drive in there. Maybe I'll take it out. I don't know. But uh, that's all there is to this video, guys. We've got it working. Look at that. Aw. Uh, that just makes me so happy. So, if you guys like the video, please do leave a like. And if you want to see more of my stuff, subscribe. We'll see you guys all in another video. Bye.